great to see everyone. Um, thank you, Ryan. My name is Kurt Baumgartner. I'm a principal security researcher with Kaspersky Labs Global Research and Analysis Team. I've been working out of Boulder, Colorado in the US since 2010 with the team. Today, I'd like to talk with you about a particular group, um, a kind of a curious subgroup of SOFA-C activity that we've been seeing since late 2015, and we've been pouring out uh, private reports. And I would like to put it sort of an intelligent perspective on uh, Zebra-C, its activity, resources, malware. Um, they show up in the news every now and then. And you know, uh, a lot of the, the what shows up in the news is uh, you know, people pulling, uh, pulling down samples from public sources and drawing out implications and, and saying, oh, this piece of spearfish implies that they're attacking a certain government. Um, I'm, I'm placing this perspective in uh, firmly in data that we've been pouring out again and uh, uh, on zebra sea activity that we've been seeing um, in the wild. So I wanted to come up with three simple bullet points to describe these guys. Uh, five years of activity, hundreds of targets. Um, essentially, it's a Russian-speaking ABT that, uh, that are specialists in profiling and gaining access. These guys steal credentials, and they maintain their access quietly once they do that. They, um, they, they are rooted. They have a lineage in something we call Delphacy. Um, that also was a part of a Sophacy project back in 2013 until about 2015. Um, and they share malware artifacts back then, at least the Delphacy project did, with the Black Energy guys. So if you're familiar with or have heard the term sandworm, uh, they share some similarities with that group. Um, and ongoing, there continues to be uh, overlap with Sophacy and Black Energy, um, which is interesting as well. So really what I want to dive into um, are some claims and predictions that I made, a, a little bit of a review uh, from SAS 2018, my, my presentation, Masha and the Bears, or These Bears. Uh, I want to give you a timeline of what I see as zebra C activity and resources, um, talk about recent stuff. Um, just a week ago or two weeks ago, we saw another spear phishing wave. So these guys are a spear phishing machine. Um, and it's interesting that they are now using Go, which is a very portable language designed by Rob Pike. And he's particularly proud of the machine-generated uh, assembler that he's been creating and the portability it provides. So that's an interesting note um, that they're interested in machine-generated uh, uh, portability, really. Um, and, so, and they're also delivering second-stage implants, which is rarely touched on. I don't think people really understand what's going on with this group, uh, partly because of that. So we'll cover some, some st second stage implants. Um, we'll talk about the malware that they've been delivering since 2013 and what to expect uh, for the rest of 2019. So last year, I'd, I'd had a presentation, Masha and the Bears. If you, were, if you were there, I love you. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> uh, I made some claims last year. The presentation, it, it focused on the second stage implant that the more traditional Sophacy group has been using, SPLM or X-Agent. And um, really, uh, um, I... I claimed uh, that we had an e a very interesting finding with Sophacy because they had been changing or shifting their focus eastward, and we found overlap between uh, Gray Lambert uh, target system in China that was shared with uh, uh, Sophacy's SPLM uh, later. Um, at the same time, Sophacy's SPLM and X-Agent implant was withering, withering away. Uh, its use is totally on the, down, on the decline in 2018, um, while uh, zebra C uh, activity and, and malware continued to be on the increase throughout the globe. Um, so uh, some of the predictions I came up with for 2018 were pretty simple. I, I, I discussed, well, we're probably going to see a lot more zebra C. They're effective at what they do. Uh, zebra C it isn't replacing uh, SPLM X-Agent activity that's also known for uh, allegedly the DNC hack and all sorts of other hacks at governments throughout the world. Um, but uh, SPLM is definitely 
disappearing, and, um, and at the same time, while they're disappearing, they're, they're shifting eastward. And zebra sea might shift eastward as well. Um, and really what ended up happening, the data came in for 2018 and 2019, and we saw a massive surge in global uh, zebra sea activity around September or October of 2018. So that was, that was accurate. Um, SPLM fell off the map altogether. The, the last two uh, targets that I knew of in Malaysia and Japan uh, are no longer targeted with SPLM. So it's, it's kind of a question of if, are they recoding? Are they, are they just leaving that tool behind or that implant behind? I don't know the answer to that. But um, uh, uh, we certainly saw them disappearing. So um, I want to give you a timeline of Zebracy itself. Um, so in October of 2013, there was th this Delphi thing. Uh, Sophacy was delivering um, Delphacy, and they were delivering it in Eastern Europe. There was a boot kit that would install, in part, a Delphi, uh, Delphi backdoor. And uh, this was very unusual to see Delphi anything from an APT. Uh, really, the only other actor at the time that I had focused on was Mahdi, an Iranian or a Persian-speaking APT. Um, and uh, the backdoor showed, uh, shared infrastructure with Sophacy, so APT28 uh, infrastructure. And then code, so both hashing functions or hashed IP APIs, um, and uh, sort of this modified or custom RC4 algorithm, which was specifically only used by Delphi C kernel mode loaders and uh, Black Energy kernel mode loaders up until 2015. Um, and then eventually it was resurrected in VPN filter. So there's an ongoing uh, connection there at, in malware artifacts with, with uh, Black Energy. Um, so along comes 2015. Uh, Delphi C and that Delphi project of uh, really whoever's behind it ends. So Delphi C is, is done. Um, and along comes Zebra C. The new Zebra C uh, Delphi package and backdoor shows up in October of 2015. Um, and the RC4 and the Carbear API hashing that was being used in the Delphi C packages and Black Energy as well um, now disappears as well. So there's some sort of split here. Um, it's kind of a little bang of Russian speaking APT uh, subsets. Sophia C goes off their way, Black Energy goes off their way, and now Zebra C is kind of right in the middle. Um, their development really doesn't make huge leaps and bounds. They're twiddling around with different variants of. Uh, Delphi backdoors throughout 2015 and 16, and along in 20, uh, July of 2017, they start uh, toying, or uh, not toying, but they start re redeveloping their code in .NET. We see multiple .NET uh, deployments throughout 2017 and 2018, and then eventually we start seeing them pushing things with Go, uh, multiple overlaps with black energy infrastructure, and uh, spear phishing uh, activity and um, these massive new waves along with uh, activity we're seeing even in the past couple of weeks from these guys where they're downloading a, a, a huge 5 meg uh, DLL that's another rewrite of uh, their common Zebra C payload code. So, um, so again, I wanna, I wanna say that the, the implant, the Zebra C implant as we know it, really showed up in uh, December of two, or October of 2015. Um, and while it's rooted in Sophacy and shared Sophacy infra infrastructure, and we considered a subset of Sophacy, um, it's very different from previous Sophacy efforts. So uh, to date, we've seen modules developed in Auto IT, Delphi, C Sharp, PowerShell, Golang, and uh, I don't know what we're gonna see this year, but I would assume, um, we might see some Rust, some R, some Python. And I look at Python, and I think most likely they'll look at Python because it's the most um, discussed and produced code on Stack Overflow. Uh, one of the things about this particular APT that's very unusual uh, when you come from a lineage of Sophia C and Black Energy, two very capable, technically capable uh, actors, um, 
is that they rip, uh, they rip off coding projects every chance they get. And it's almost as though this is machine guided. Um, they, they will copy and paste portions of their backdoor, recompile it, and send it out to additional targets, which I'll come back to. That's interesting. But that's something we didn't see with Sophacy and their sort of elegant, exhaustive C uh, code base in XAgent, and certainly not what we saw with the Black Energy guys and the code they deployed during their wiping efforts um, in 2014 and uh, their destructive efforts in Ukraine in 2015. So um, why don't I start with something uh, very recent in the past couple of weeks. These guys sent out another small wave of spearfish. Um, it's, it's the usual stuff. It's th the name of the game, again, for these guys is um, profiling targets and then gaining access and maintaining that access. So they go about that by uh, identifying um, the volume serial number of the system they're, they're running on, uh, and they maintain that as a unique ID for that system. Then they identify system information, they gather everything they can about it, a running process list, and a screenshot that kind of anchors in time when they were first on the machine. Uh, the running process list is going to be interesting later when it comes to the second stage implants. But this is, the, this is their playbook. Um, they do this in order to steal credentials if the, if the system is of further interest to them. And again, they're active um, and they're redeveloping the, the, uh, the Go code and the, the code base is actually getting larger because they're adding AES and other cryptography uh, uh, modules and code to their, to their malware. Uh, every now in the news, you might see that, oh, there are a couple of variants of, uh, there are two variants of Zebracy. And with the Go code, you can see multiple project strings over the past year. Um, functions are added and removed from this module per target. So on a, almost on a case-by-case -case basis, they are recreating and recoding new variants. And this is just the Go uh, module, let alone auto IT, uh, Delphi, all the other stuff. So there are certainly more than two variants of Zebracy. These guys are very active, and they continue to be very active. It also might suggest to you that they're fairly effective at what they're doing if there's so much uh, uh, resource being put into maintaining this code set. So when you see them delivering second stage implants, uh, things become a little more interesting because it does tell you what they're, what they're really focused on. Um, the second stage implants are always in relation to the, the list of running processes that they've pulled off a machine. So if they haven't delivered something in the first stage uh, of code that they've spearfished a target with, um, they'll see uh, the process list coming back to them. And in, in some cases, there are these Asian uh, custom builds of Chromium, Scent Browser, 7-Star, um, they go after Yandex, but they send down these second stage implants to gather up uh, credential stores from these additional browsers. And again, that's what they're after. They're after credentials and maintaining access quietly. So later on, it's going to be very difficult to see these guys because they're living off the land um, or they're coming back with credentials to monitor uh, email accounts, communications, um, that sort of thing. They, they've delivered second stage implants for common email clients like Outlook and uh, Thunderbird and others as well. And then finally, uh, in 2000, I think it was in 2017, they, they started delivering sort of this unexpected file content uh, C-sharp uh, stealer. Um, we called it Covfacy, um, and uh, essentially, uh, when a network drive or a USB stick would be plugged in or added to the system, it would identify files less than 60 meg and certain types of content based on file extensions and start copying across uh, that data. It, this is unusual for this group. They don't do a lot of file copies. The capa capability is there, but for the most part, they're looking, uh, looking at uh, stealing credentials. And then finally, um, the C-sharp logger they added for 
uh, generic credential stealing across all these software packages. So I mentioned uh, in de December of 2015, or October of 2015, again, that's, that was our first sighting of ZebraC and the ZebraC payload. Um, auto IT, an auto IT compiled executable was what they first spearfished the target with. Um, the, the auto IT script and its original sort of process flow or control flow uh, is recoded again and again in Delphi and Go and other modules. Um, and essentially, this type of functionality is what they want to deliver to a system every time. So they capture, the, well, first they get the volume information, a, a, a serial number from the hard drive. Um, and then they perform a screen capture. They gather up system, system information. There's a process list call here that gives them the list of processes so they can identify whether or not they're missing out on credentials from an unexpected software package, and, uh, and then some other, some other uh, functionality as well. Um, I've been asked several times why we don't call it Zekapob. Uh, in April of 2016, I believe, is when this URL came about. Um, our research had been ongoing and had connected these guys with uh, Delphacy before then, so we were calling it Zebracy by this point. But that's really where it, this came from. Uh, an individual was spearfished uh, who works in a fairly bureaucratic organization related to um, visa applications and other things, um, and, uh, and the, the malware reached out to that URL to pull down further uh, Delphi backdoors but we're sticking with Zebracy. <laughs> um, the Delphi backdoors that these guys code up uh, add and removes functionality over time, but usually it's over a dozen, maybe 16 different functions that they maintain within these backdoors to, again, uh, maintain access, sometimes do uh, some level of, uh, of file, uh, file theft. Um, but generally, they're going to pull down a, a second stage implant or, and run it with something like this. Their C-sharp, um, they made incremental changes to their code, but again, it's kind of the same stuff. They're collecting system information, a, a volume serial number, the task list, and then a screenshot. This is C -sharp their C-sharp code for gathering screenshots from a system and anchoring sort of when they first get on that system uh, in time. Uh, it has multiple variants wh where they are uh, grabbing up the serial number information, for example, with a different function. So they are constantly sort of tweaking and trying to improve what their malware is doing. Um, uh, their C Sharp modules in 2017 uh, included uh, network file stealers, key loggers, and eventually the Canon backdoor, which has gotten quite a bit of public coverage. Um, again, this is very unusual and different from previous SOFACY activity that we've seen. They don't crank out modules like this. They don't uh, modify, make incremental changes, and have sort of this agile st style in multiple languages like, like these guys do. So um, the Delphi, uh, I want to I step back again um, to the Delphi package. Um, so the Delphi ZebraC that we originally saw, that Delphi payload, has its roots in um, uh, Delphacy. And uh, uh, late 2013 is when we initially saw this Sophacy bootkit. Uh, and that bootkit, in turn, was used to load a Delphi backdoor. Um, Delphacy and Black Energy shared uh, a very unique function for about two years. And then when Zebracy, at the, in October of 2015, when Zebracy itself took off, uh, when that project took off, then this, uh, this custom RC4 just disappeared. I've searched through multiple collections looking for that function, and there are about 12 Black Energy modules and a few Delphacy kernel modules that maintain that uh, unusual RC4 uh, code. Um, so again, this, this is kind of circumstantial stuff, but I really do believe that, got it, uh, that it ties together the, um, the, the, the groups and the lineage and sort of this break in October 2015. 
Another thing that ties together zebracy with sophacy uh, early on, this is early 2016, this is 2015, um, was some WHOIS data we were able to collect on one of the only domains that they had used in their lineup. So they were spearfishing people uh, with an auto IT payload. They downloaded that pay, they downloaded a, uh, or I should say, they, they were spearfishing with an auto IT executable, which in turn downloaded a Delphi backdoor, and that called back to romatica.com. Uh, GDP, GDPR has redacted who is information, but we know because of the who is information on the same day with the same e email account, uh, the Zebracy guys created Romatica and Raviston.com. And this, uh, this domain was hosted on an IP address that maintained and hosted multiple uh, Sophacy, known Sophacy domains. So this isn't exactly a loose connection. This is, this is um, uh, a fairly solid connection. Um, we know that they were sharing infrastructure in the early days of the project. So another unusual thing that has come up out of this, um, I wanted to take a look at the, the flashy new decompiler. Um, and this is the, uh, the custom RC4 implementation that the decompiler spits out and what the code looks like. Um, and again, the 2000 to 2000, 2013 to 2015 timing and the usage and the sort of end of this code uh, again, ties together Zebracy uh, with both Black Energy and Sophacy. Zebracy in practice. So what we're seeing, what we're seeing ongoing, are multiple waves of spearfish, ongoing innovation. We see them bringing in multiple languages and making tweaks here and there. They're innovative. They're not inventing something new, but they're very innovative. Um, they're consistently. Their opsec is very good. Um, they hide behind VPNs, cryptocurrency when handling their infrastructure. So this is, which is fairly common for uh, these types of groups, but they are very consistent, very good at what they're doing. They have a stable and separate infrastructure now from the actual Sophacy uh, infrastructure, and uh, they continue to, to move towards better encryption strategies uh, within their infrastructure and communications. So next up, uh, what do I think we're going to see for the rest of 2019? Well, we're going to continue to see spear phishing from, from these guys. That's the name of the game. They're a spear phishing machine that gains access, compromises boxes, maintains that access, and steals credentials. Um, I, I predict that they're going to move possibly to Python, Ruby, R, something new, another managed language or scripting language uh, that makes incremental changes and rewriting backdoors uh, quick, easy, agile, um, and I don't think we'll see uh, Mimi Cats, but we because we haven't been seeing Mimi Cats with these guys, which is really odd for a group so interested in credential stealing. Uh, but we will continue to see more credential stealing uh, code rips from these guys being implemented and deployed as second stage implants. And in the spirit of sort of the ghost in the shell theme here. Uh, I want to at least bring up one possibility about what's really going on, because when you have a group, a subgroup like Zebracy, uh, that's rooted in a technically advanced and capable group like Sophacy and Black Energy, it makes me think something is going on behind the scenes that's a lot more interesting than uh, these guys r just ripping code and sending it out. Um, Potentially, we have some machine learning going on here that is maintaining some level of effectiveness for these guys. We know that uh, the DoD uh, completed a grant where machines are performing coding and programming for themselves. Um, quite possibly, these guys are, have some sort of machine learning guided uh, uh, development process going on, and they're, they're ripping code and implementing, re-implementing things based on that advice. Um, so uh, that's, that's all I have for today, and I'm going to wrap it up. I thank you for your time. Be good.